Some of the other ones are not. But web, web comps is implemented in three browsers now, shipping in three browsers. Safari, um, Mozilla, Firefox, and Opera. I think when archaeologists come back and look at web pages um, <laughs> a thousand years from now, they're going to split into two eras. It's going to be the pre-pump era and the post-pump era. This is going to change the face of the web. And I think it could happen next year. But it depends on you guys. If you start using this, this is going to really, really uh, uh, make things different. It's going to lead to a much richer web. What we have today, of course, we have the CSS one and two properties. We have a well-tuned machines for handling pumps in our browsers. Those machines don't have much to work with, though. They only have roughly 10, um, 10 pump families that are available, that are web these, these are uh, Microsoft pumps. They donated these for pump use uh, in 1996. Uh, these are high-quality pumps. It's a, it's a great project. Probably the best thing Microsoft ever did. <laughs> <laughs> but by now we're we're a little sick and tired of them after having reading all our text with these fonts for ten years. The good news is there's more fonts out there. If you look at the the web fonts here on the left side, that's ten families. On fontreat.com, I counted somewhere between four thousand and five thousand uh, font families. So they're already there on the web. What's missing, or what has been missing until now, is the link between the style sheet and the font handle. So we have to that in now and uh, implemented it so that in Firefox, Safari, and Opera, you can actually interoperably use these, these uh, uh, web fonts. Here's a simple example where you add two lines of code. First, you import this external style sheet, which, has, which names hundreds of fonts uh, and points has URL pointing to them, so you don't have to keep track of all of that. You just import one CSS file, and then you can start using these uh, font family names. Uh, this happens to be Angel, which is, uh, I think, fairly decorative um, <laughs> text. It's, um, it's not something you would want to, you know, read your uh, all your newspapers in, mm -hmm. um, but for an invitation or for some effect, uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful font. And there are thousands and thousands of of, um, of examples of this, and this can be can be used right now. Of course, there's one problem, only one problem. It's not supported in IE. Mm -hmm. And since we have IE luminaries here uh, with us today, I would like to make it. There you are. I found you. <laughs> 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 You're going to call us over. We have supported this technology for many years.
also another school called uh, Type Kit, right? Type Kit, sort of another one. That's true. Yeah. So there's a lot of things happening in the web comp space, and I encourage you to start playing with this, put it in, you know, see how web design changes after we get these these uh, Perfect. I'm going to go on. Um, give some examples of the color stuff that Molly talked about as well. I changed my colors. I used to use uh, red, um, but I thought uh, I changed it to blue for in honor of the. So here, what we're seeing um, is a new value called RGBA, uh, which has this uh, factor at the end, the fourth uh, parameter here, which gives uh, an opacity or a transparency uh, value. So here at the bottom it's solid, the blue is blue. But as it goes upwards, you see the, the transparency increases. It's still, so it's still a, a totally blue <coughs> color, 00255, only blue, but since uh, the white is allowed to shine through there, it looks uh, like blue. If we add a green background to it, you will see that, uh, well, it still kind of looks like blue to the human eye, but it's actually a lot more green in there uh, than, than it was before. The same with, with yellow. So this is a very uh, useful uh, thing uh, to have. Uh, it's, it's similar to the opacity property. Um, the opacity property sets basically the same thing on the element itself, not just on that color value. Uh, but you can achieve the same thing. And you can set opacity values on rectangles um, on the screen, so that here we have um, uh, uh, opacity one on the on the uh, yellow one, which lies under. Uh, on the one that's above, it's set to 0 0.5. That's why the yellow shines through. Now, if you change the order of those two rectangles, we'll see that uh, the the one with opacity one doesn't let anything through, and uh, therefore the green stays uh, stays underneath. I think this is Safari, Firefox, uh, Opera implemented at this stage. Yeah, people not. I think that's right. So again. Start playing with this, see if you like it. I'm going to skip media queries because that's, I don't have time for that. I'd like to show a few, just a little bit about backgrounds and borders. Um, border radius has been discussed. We have it here in uh, Presto 2.4. You can do some incredible things with it uh, by setting a different horizontal radius versus a vertical radius. Uh, by setting different um, different uh, border radius in different corners. Then there's a uh, box shadow as well, which used to be in the background some borders draft. I don't think it's there anymore, but it's going to reappear in some other WCC drafts. And some other things happen when you combine all these things. I'm going to show some compound examples just to show here box shadow. Um, I've made it a bit fuzzy. You can say that it shouldn't have an offset so that it appears all around the box. And then you can flip the switch by making it, here's the, here, here it's on the outside of the box. You flip the switch by adding this little keyword here, inset, and then it's, now it's on the, on the inside. And of course you can have both, to make it kind of this, this, this <laughs> I'm not a designer. <laughs> 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 of course, and then you can combine it with the border um, radius. Transitions. Brief demo, just showing what you can do here. Um, has this been discussed today, earlier? Yeah, yeah. a little bit. You basically define two states, one normal and one um, with, the, with, for example, hover. And the browser will try to interpolate between those two states in the given time period that's specified uh, on the transition duration property here. So here it's in, in one second, it will go from one state uh, to the other. 